everyone, and welcome to Financial Behavior Keynote Group. We're so glad you could join us today. We are a speaking consulting firm that caters to the financial planning, counseling, and therapy professions. I'm Dr. Mary Bell Carlson, and I'm honored to have Dr. Michael Thomas with us today. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, Michael, tell us a little bit about your story. What drove your interest in personal finance? Yeah, uh, I think honestly, there was me reading a book on psychology, quite honestly. It was influenced by Robert Cialdini, a faculty member in the psychology department at an institution of higher education that I worked with. He said, you know what? I want you to read this book. <laughs> and I was like, I don't really have the time to read another book. Uh, so, but I took it anyway, and I ended up reading, and it completely changed the way that I thought about the world that we were navigating. Even if I was making a decision, was I making the decision or was something designed in a way to nudge me to make a decision or to incentivize me to make a decision, uh, which actually led me to reading more books on psychology, more specifically about psychology and money. Uh, one of the the first books that I read in that area is why smart people make poor financial choices, whatever it may be. Uh, so, yeah, so I've j I just started reading more and more and more psychology and actually immersed myself in that space for a few years. And um, money was always something that I was interested in as well. I just, to me, it just made perfect sense. Right? <laughs> so this is 2008, 2009, 2010. Um, and at that point, it dawned on me that, hey, there may be an opportunity to do, to do more in this space as it relates to thinking about what's what we already know about psychology and psychology field, but then commingling this with, with money. Um, and so I heard about the financial planning program at the University of Georgia, and it was family financial planning. And for me, that kind of invoked this whole idea of systems theory, right? In the way that we think about the dynamics and interactions with individuals within household, outside household. It's like, this is exactly what I want to do. And, uh, and then with the Aspire Clinic and all that good stuff in terms of and working with uh, marriage and family therapist folks who actually knew systems theory really, really well. So I would literally just be a fly on the wall and ask tons of questions about their theoretical frameworks and how they worked with individuals and households from a marriage and family perspective. And then, so my experiences with them and the psychology that I've been reading and the interests that I've already had with money just kind of started working into something uh, that's kind of ultimately led me to kind of where I am today, quite honestly. <laughs> and honestly, that's, that's my journey uh, is understanding systems, internal systems, as well as external systems, how these things impact money and how we can actually really address the root causes of issues that basically at the end of the day lead to sustainable financial wellness and well-being. You know, that leads us so well into your title and that is you are known as a financial empathy and compassion specialist. So these aren't common words that we hear with finance in front of them. So help them just understand <laughs> what a financial empathy and compassion specialist is. Yeah, actually. So really it's going back to what I just mentioned earlier. It's it's understanding because for so long in our industry, we've we've used classical economic perspectives in terms of optimization of utility, right? And not assuming information asymmetry, not assuming you know, people having more choice and, you know, generally we have market takers and all these, like there's a whole host of things. Uh, but what we, what we knew very early on, which comes from one of my favorite papers, which is prospect theory, uh, is that the way people make decisions under uncertainty is, is varied. And there's a unique line in that paper that talks about this process of the coding and encoding of information and it's actually probably one of my favorite lines in any paper because that really does speak to what we're dealing with when we work with clients, right? Clients, when they receive information from us, are perceiving that information through their context, right? 
uh, based on what they're bounded by. So there's another great paper by Herbert Simon on bounded rationality, which has influenced the way that I think about things. Uh, so if someone is bounded, they're going to receive information through a very direct prism by maybe limited circumstances, limited capacity, limited knowledge, limited access, so on and so forth. But they're making satisficing or the best decision that they can make within their context, right? So financial empathy and compassion specialists really is taking the time to understand the context and the hidden barriers that our clients are facing both internally and externally and not assuming that just because I provide a recommendation, recommendation and someone doesn't follow through on it, that person doesn't care. And I'll be honest with you, for the very longest time in our industry and in business in general, if someone didn't follow through on a communication, we would immediately resign to saying that, well, this person must not want this financial aid money. This person must not want better for themselves. That's not the case at all. It can be stress. It could be mental health. It can be relational dynamics that present, prevent someone from doing something. So leading with empathy and delivering with compassion is a way to effectively interact with a family or a household that we're working with that actually prior prioritizes the relationship just as much as it does the outcome. Because if we engage in deeper relationship, people share the vulnerable things that we need to understand about them so that then we can create very specific solutions that work where people are and not where we expect them to be. All right. Uh, so that's the that's the whole notion behind that in terms of the financial empathy and compassion specialists. And the reason why I specifically include compassion is that when you look at the research and empathy and there's a host of research in the health and services profession, they've been here, they've done it. There's a lot of great work. Uh, but in some of the papers that have been written, compassion isn't always necessarily something that's encouraged. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I think that sometimes we kind of get stuck in the middle, right, and don't actually navigate this process all the way through in terms of thinking about how can I best serve this person within the context of their lives, which means oftentimes as someone who provides a service, I have to rethink how I deliver, right, whatever recommendation I'm providing, because it works within my context, it may not work in their context. So that is the process of walking a mile in someone's shoes is to say that understanding their circumstances, let me put myself where they are and let me think about how I work out of this with everything that I know and everything that I know about the client. Um, not just to experience them, but to actually serve them as well. And, and that's kind of the goal there. So empathy to me without compassion is not completing the process. Very well explained. One of the things I love about you, Michael, and in fact, about the whole team is that you've taken research. This isn't Michael's best ideas. Mm -hmm. it, it is based on research and evidence-based information that has taken years. I mean, we're talking decades of discovery about the human brain and relationships and how we work together. And you've just articulated how you can apply that to financial planning. And Absolutely. so that's really what Financial Behavior Keynote is all about, is taking evidence-based research and information and applying it in a very simple and straightforward way to financial planning practices, counseling practices, anyone in that financial planning profession to be able to apply it to your clients. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. We're so glad to have you and we'll see you next time. Take care. Uh, thank you. Bye.